ricordami qual è che era il numero da... Quindi, 2, 8, cancelletto. Bene, abbastanza, dai. Adesso abbiamo qua un progettino da sottoporto. Ma metti le là nella... Hai qualcosa a bere, un caffè? Io sono a posto, grazie. Io ho un po' d'acqua. D'acqua. Andiamo là. Sì, grazie. Ecco qua. Allora, allora abbiamo un'idea, nel senso... Ehm, è già qualcosa. È già qualcosa. Abbiamo un progetto, in sostanza, esiste un'associazione, si chiama AIG. Non so se ne hai mai sentito qualcosa del genere. Mm, sinceramente no. Ok, eh, meglio. Un'associazione studentesca che a livello proprio europeo fa davvero di tutto, cioè questa associazione ha, ha diversi percorsi tematici. Ok, in che maniera quindi volete raccontare questa storia? Perché non mi è chiaro un documentario di questa associazione. A chi interessa e soprattutto che cosa volete raccontare? Esatto. Come lo volete raccontare? Questa, questa è la domanda. Quello che vogliamo raccontare è... C'è il modo in cui questa associazione può cambiare veramente il, il, cioè la vita delle persone. Vogliamo far capire in che modo potrebbe aiutare anche ad altre persone. Avremmo già in sostanza indagato un, uh, 5 persone. Più o meno siamo intorno tra i 18 e i 30 anni. 30 anni qualcosa sì. del genere. Queste 5 persone secondo noi rappresentano al meglio quello che sarebbe l'associazione. Ma qui, qui a Milano? No, sono sparse in giro praticamente per tutta Europa. Aspetta, facciamo così, passami sì. dietro e ti faccio vedere allora, sì. sulla sì. mappa. Sì. 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 La prima tappa intendiamo a farla a Colonia, dove ci sono Colonia la coppia. Lì. Qua. Quindi... Esatto. Dopodiché da Colonia sì. l'idea sarebbe passare direttamente a Murcia. Che... Ah, guarda qua. Ecco eh, eccola qui. Kiev, ah. capitale dell'Ucraina. Quindi, se non mi sbaglio, è qui, sì, esatto. Dove c'è Anna? Mm -hmm. La storia. E da Kiev? E da Kiev passare, alla fine, andare a Toulouse, che, se non mi sbaglio, sta qui. Tolosa, esatto. Un volo diretto da Milano, Kiev, dovrebbe essere qualcosa come due, due tre ore, qualcosa, qualcosa di questo tipo. Oh, ciao Jacopo. Ciao, ciao, ciao Jacopo. Ciao, ciao, ciao Jacopo. Raquel. Quanto tempo impiegheresti in questo viaggio? Questa è una bella domanda. Fate bene a fare questa cosa? Uno solo operatore, quindi con che camera? Come... Sì, eh, un solo operatore, un fonico audio e tu per, per le interviste. Ah. Un mese e mezzo. Un mese e mezzo? Eh, secondo mese me mese. State, in giro, state in giro un mese e mezzo. Un mese e mezzo, sì. Più la post-produzione, sì. quanto è? Quindi secondo te possiamo... un tentativo lo possiamo fare? Direi che... Ah. Facciamo questo tentativo, dai. Proviamoci, no? Allora niente, quindi si parte? Si parte. Partite anzi. Noi vi guardiamo da qua, mandateci foto, cartoline. Vi aspetto qua tra un mese e mezzo con lo champagne, allora lo sbocciamo e vediamo. Allora, se il risultato è buono, sbocciamo per il risultato buono. Se il risultato non è buono, sbocciamo. No, comunque. Per, per dimenticare. Va bene. Oh oh! quite some years ago already for and it was very very particular I didn't know about Asia anything I was still student at university but there was basically no advertising anything and I was working in one company and my colleague uh, told me like ah I'm organizing one event here in Bratislava and I know that you know a lot of people and you can manage everything could you maybe please help us to organize this one gala night for like celebration we had 20 years of Aisha Bratislava and I was like no why not why not Aisha found me a job well really everything is connected with Aisha and again if you need the help just uh, contact Asians they will always help and there was really you 
So um, I was studying in Netherlands, in Eindhoven. I was missing my Erasmus time, and uh, I wanted to go next wanted to get to know new people in Aachen and I was like, so how to do this? I googled Erasmus Aachen and I found IG. I applied to be a tutor, which means uh, you take care of a few Erasmus students. And uh, so I joined basically one week later for a tutoring and uh, I didn't have anything to do. I didn't have studies yet, I didn't have anything. So I joined all activities like uh, weekly meetings and uh, festivals. And basically I went partying for like three weeks straight with my Erasmus people. I quickly became active in the board and I joined my first Agua, uh, which was in Patra. And we were thinking how to go there and flight connections were terrible. So we decided to do a road trip. And uh, on the way we said no hostels, only sleeping at other IGNs or friends. So the first stop that we found was Bratislava. I've never been in Bratislava, so we just wrote them, can you host us for one night? And they wrote back, yes, we can host you for one night. And we met in a bar, we were terribly uh, tired because it was the night of uh, some university deadlines. It was a very rainy day and uh, on the way they said, um, ah, you go by car, can you take some of our heavier luggage? And um, we took it to Patra and in Patra she came back like, can you give us uh, our stuff back? And I was like, I'm sorry, I don't have my keys now. And somehow we started hanging out together at Agora. You were and chasing me all the time there. <laughs> yes, of course. So uh, we are together in Summer University Coordination Team, which uh, is responsible for the whole Summer University project. It's the longest and oldest uh, project in Asia Europe, which is involving around 4,000 Asians every year. So it's a really huge project. And it needs, of course, a bunch of people who are coordinating that everything goes smoothly, that organizers can organize summer universities and that uh, participants can apply because summer universities are just awesome. Like, I think you, you know that uh, most of the people join IJ because of summer universities. And this year, for example, we have 75 summer universities like this. So you can imagine that it really requires some people. So basically we are setting up the rules and uh, trying people get them to follow them and uh, we are trying to increase the visibility and also that we have more people to come on summer universities, that's our goal. Yeah. I think what makes the project special is that it's uh, one of the longest events you can organize in IG. It's uh, about two weeks and you're much closer to participants because it's uh, mostly a fun event with content, not the other way around. And you're constantly with participants, you have much more time to talk with them. So you get a lot of recognition that you usually don't get. I think if you make a three-day event, you don't get to know them so much. And for participants, maybe the coolest point is that you learn how to travel on your own because usually you have to go alone somewhere and also to maybe break a fear from speaking foreign language, also breaking fear from other cultures, which some people still might have. And of course, getting to know the people in a cool way. I think what makes it the most successful is because it's received as a summer holiday so if you want to go on holiday you can go on some university it's cheaper than a normal holiday it's better than a normal holiday and you meet many many more people and yes we put content in it but it's perceived by most participants which are new members often as a good way to have holidays and get in touch with IG and there is much more behind like intercultural exchange that you're doing implicitly but yes you cannot i cannot tell you how amazing it is if i come to you as a new person i can tell you how much i travel how much 
how many people I meet, but you cannot experience until you do it. Yeah. So I tell you, go on summer alone, you meet 20 other cool people, they say, hmm, maybe, maybe, but many, many people do Erasmus before. So um, I know some locals where the Erasmus people are the main target group, and they say, I miss Erasmus, and I tell you, it's mini Erasmus, and they say, okay, let's yes. try. I mean, what can go wrong? And what is behind, people notice when they notice. You cannot sell it before, I think. playground you can get in a positive way you can try things and um, you don't die if they don't succeed of course you have responsibility but uh, if I want to have an event for 800 people I go and try and I have people who support it and I can try a lot and uh, I don't lose a job if I don't do it or anything so it's uh, like a mini Erasmus and the biggest playground I can imagine for trying everything I want for meeting new people, setting up projects, leading a team, which I would have never done otherwise. That's like empowerment in a nice way for me. University teached me a lot, definitely, but I don't think that uh, without IJ I would gain so much as without. Uh, university can teach you to be a professional in your field, but where else would I ever have a possibility to become a trainer, to speak in front of 800 people, Maybe sometimes screw up something, but learn from those failures and learn how to uh, make it better next time. And uh, yeah, to be more independent, I would say. This is something what university cannot really tell you. And with IJ, after years or after traveling to so many events, you can become completely independent and it really creates your personality, not only your knowledge. And that's why people should join IJ because it's enjoying your uh, youth, enjoying your life, but on the other hand, gaining something which you maybe don't see right now. But we'll, you know, we have this saying: you you will find it when you are old, when you actually really need it. Oh, oh. It was uh, April 2013, uh, it was the day of the, of the deadline at 2 a.m. for summer universities. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, talking with a friend online, ch chatting with a friend and he told me, hey, look at what I might do this summer with my girlfriend and so on. And he had no idea about the deadline or that they couldn't go together or anything. And I read everything. I finished at 4 a.m. or something, and then I woke up and called. It was Sunday, uh, so I called uh, Aja Alicante. Uh, I called Pablo, and yeah, we didn't know each other. I said that I wanted to go to the Scandinavian Dream. Everybody wanted to go to the summer university, and had, they had like 200 applications, and I had to do mine in one day, so mm -hmm. they told me, no, you can't go to that one. I chose um, Enschede, Utrecht and Cologne. Mm -hmm. They chose me. 
in the summer university. They were about to not choose me. I realized after the summer university, which would have been quite bad for me because Asia gave me a lot at the end and probably I would have dropped out. So when I came back, I had one day of rest and then I went to the last day of the summer university in Alicante to help out. I had a mix of feelings because uh, when I was in, in, um, in Cologne, I met uh, an Italian guy who was living in Cologne and he was from Asia Köln. And he told me that moving to Köln, to Cologne, to Germany uh, to study was the best choice he had ever made. And I was in a situation where I wasn't really happy with my university. I was good with my job, but also not. I didn't like the city where I was living in. And yeah, I came back with the mindset of let's move to Germany. And uh, after a week of research, with uh, courses and prizes and universities and so on, I decided to go to, to move to Dresden in one month after. Uh, but actually I did not know Dresden before, so I didn't even know it existed. Yeah, so obviously Aje took me out of Spain somehow. <laughs> Yeah, so when I first moved to Dresden, there wasn't any IJ there. So I was thinking, okay, I have to found something. So I organized a running dinner first before I went to university, but nobody stepped on the project. There weren't so many people interested yet because they did not know what it was. It's always hard to pull people towards something that doesn't exist yet because IJ Dresden didn't exist, even though IJ existed somewhere else. So I was really committed to founding IJ Dresden because I knew that it could provide me with a lot of things and development and new ideas, projects, friends and also to other people. But yeah, it, it worked out. Without being a student, I created a student's club uh, without any other people. There was a moment at the, at the very beginning um, with the first summer university promotion uh, I was new to everything. I didn't design anything before and I didn't give a speech. Well, I had but really small things. And uh, I, I made the summer university promotion by myself in Dresden. Everything was promoting a meeting at university for me to explain what summer universities was, no? Okay, so I went to the meeting and there was nobody. No. Zero people. Then a two friends of mine came to see how it was going, but yeah, it was hard, no? That nobody came after all that work and so much, um, like, I was really excited to get people, but sadly it didn't work out as I expected. And yeah, at first I was like, man, what am I gonna do? Um, nobody, I cannot believe it. But then uh, I saw it from another perspective and I said, okay, then I did something wrong. I had to do it better. It, it gave me strength actually to, to keep going and working hard because I had the... the Determination the, to... Yes, it, come on, it was my dream back then to, to found it and to, to make it happen. So that could not get in my way. Oh. Yes. <laughs> So I went to an event in Prague, which was organized by AJ Eindhoven and AJ Prague, and they had an exchange there. And there I met Lucia, which was the president of AJ Bratislava. And during the summer university, she told me like, hey Jorge, send me your CV, uh, because we had a really good, um, like you, are, you fit this job perfectly, and I want you to, to apply to work in Google with me uh, in this project and it's perfect for you. So I said, okay, well, yeah, I, I gotta do it. I really liked Google before, I was a fan. And, uh, but I said, well, I don't have studies because I quit my studies to, mm -hmm. to, to do IJ full time before <laughs> I did. Uh, I drove to Dresden, I left the summer university for half a day so that I could have the, the interview. And yeah, the interview went quite well. 
um, they asked me some questions of management, which I could not have answered the way I did without the IJ experience for sure. Thanks to IJ and organizing so many events, my problem solving skills went up a lot because you always have problems when you're working with volunteers with no budget and so on. So then uh, it was also a good answer and at the end I got hired even during the interview. He told me that it was a really good interview, one of the best. So yeah, IJ was key again. To, to get this job. So IJ Network got me into the interview and my IJ experience got me into the job. I'm trying to start finding something else that will Give, bring me so much like IJ does. I know it's not gonna be easy, but uh, come on, it's doable and there's a point where you have to step up and take it to the next level again. So for me, at the end, IJ is a platform where you can develop your skills that you might not know that they exist yet, but you have them inside you or you can develop new ones that you are not very good at. So you can get out of your, out of your comfort zone, your area of friends where you have a position always and so on and you can come to IJ and have a new perspective and learn things that you are not learning at university. So for me this is the most important besides meeting amazing friends and getting to know really interesting people. It's the developing part where you can really grow as a person and as a professional. Everybody has a degree. We live in the most educated generation in history. Everybody has a degree. <laughs> not me, but in general, most people have a degree, not like 20 years ago. So you have to step out. You, everybody's here. And if you join IAG and you start doing things, you have the degree and you have all the things that other people yeah. don't have. So it's really, again, a key to get into a job so place. So IAG makes a difference? Of course, IAG makes a difference, of course. right after the first time university in Florence so you can imagine like she's like so we're going to party and she's like you know when I was in IJ there were 35 people from all around the world and we were like so it's better than here she's like yeah we're like okay cool and it was like this for two weeks so in the end I was like okay I must be there I must try this experience I should go there it was my first experience going abroad, so this, you know, visa and so on. In Ukraine it's such a big story, you have to collect a lot of documents. So I had to put like a lot of money to my account, so I was like 
basically literally running to all my friends like can you borrow me some money for one week so I put them on the bank just to show them that I have them because otherwise they will not let me because they were thinking that I will stay there you know to work and for Italian embassy it's like really popular story a blonde Ukrainian going abroad uh-huh okay sure here come back mm -hmm. I opened the some university website and you know I was like <sighs> Like this a world of stuff. Yeah. I'm going there by myself, two weeks, like it will be something like really incredible. What to choose? And then I realized, okay, I, I really want to go and to see some sea. <laughs> and I want to have sun bays and I want parties and I love culture and history. Hmm. So I'm at the airport and I'm in Rome and I'm like absolutely lost. In, it's my first time we're traveling to Salerno and I see a guy who takes this, you know, Aisha sign written on like this stuff that they use for hitchhiking. And when I came back, like I was absolutely different person. Like how different people are, how open they are. They don't have, you know, the same, this prejudice that we have in our countries. They have another ones, but still it's so interesting, you know. You know, it just literally blowed my mind. I was talking so much about our politics. I was really surprised that Ukraine is not so popular. Nobody knew about Ukraine, like not so much, you know. So when you're speaking to a Dutch guy, you're like, oh, Amsterdam, you have this street and that, and also you have that. And he's like, ooh, Kiev, capital of Ukraine. You're like, yay, at least something. Yeah, so it's really cool. After I came back, basically, I realized that, okay, what can I do here on local level? I decided to run for the president and in my like of our local and I in my you know I had to present myself on local Agora so I made a nice presentation and one of the facts was and we are gonna organize a huge international event in our city and everybody was like ooh why we decided to do the Agora I think because it's the most powerful event in Asia it's the place for four days it's so much it has so much power it has so much different cultures coming together, so many different interesting, inspiring people that you meet, so many decisions are made. And I think it proves the fact that IJ is all about communication because you cannot do so much sometimes for two months as you do when you meet, you know, and do it live. So, and that was the moment. We are in Agora Cagliari. It was that moment on the stage and uh, so the president is like, Agora goes to and Kiev. And you know, I was so like surprised and shocked by the audience because they, you know, they stood up, they started to applaud. They are like supporting us. By that time, there was no conflict for half a year in Kiev, but it moved slowly to East. And still it was on the news. There were a lot of prejudice, stereotypes, people are afraid to come. And I was like, okay, so let's do it. Aisha did a lot of good things for this country, for these people, for this youth. It existed in Ukraine for 20 years. And each time I see the people coming back from some university, Agora, and this, you know, atmosphere, this, you know, sunshine that goes from the breast, I'm like, oh. Agora for me, Agora Kiev, was the biggest challenge in my life. Because it, I, I think I challenged myself as a Ukrainian, as a leader, as a girl who had to, you know, take all the stress and get over it, as a IUJ member, as a president, as a daughter who didn't call her parents because I was too busy and... But that's what I did for IUJ and I guess it was a time when I, when everything was over, I was like sitting, looking at the stage, looking at the everything, like, and doing so fast. <laughs> so life exists after IUJ because Actually, my life is Aisha still, although I'm not active anymore. Um, I also met a person I love in Aisha. You know, when you meet a person and he's like, I'm from Aisha, you know? And you're like, I'm also from Aisha. And it's like, it already your person because he knows how to travel, he knows how to save money, how to survive, he's open-minded. 
he's multitasking, he's not introvert, you know, and he is active and, and he wants more, you know, he wants to change the world. It means that he wants to do something in the community, you know, he wants to develop himself. And it's it's something, you know, in common with all of us. And it doesn't matter where, which country we come from, you know, it's always there's something that we can find and it's always something that, you know, unites us. It doesn't matter where we met, it's always like, you know, Ah, you have a sticker on your luggage and you're in the airport, like you're from Ajay. Yeah, me too. Oh, that's cool. And that's all. You know, Ajay is, you know, you know like a glue. Ajay, yeah. yeah, it's like a glue that, you, you know, know, the way of stick. person you are. My parents, my grandparents especially, for them the world was absolutely different. Like it was closed, you know, they couldn't literally go outside the country when the Soviet Union was. For me, everything is open. Like, I can just have, okay, I don't have visa now, but I will have it. I mean, it's not a problem, but, and I can go, I can travel, I can talk to people, I can learn from them. And it, that's crazy, you know, how many opportunities it's open to me. Why not? I mean, I could live in States, you know, because I was there five years ago before I joined Asia. I think I would be still okay. I mean, but I think I would be so, many, so much more, you know, into my worries and all this, like, bubble that we have in Ukraine because those people who are not traveling like the world from Ukraine, they cannot see, they cannot talk to people, they cannot understand them and they cannot actually realize how the world is changing fast, like so fast and how much should we run, you know, to at least touch, you know, something. So I think I'm one of the lucky ones. The people who are going to join Asia, they are also like choosing the right way for their own personal development, whatever they want to do in their life. Quand on parlait d'AFG, donc c'était euh, après un an, une amie que j'ai rencontrée à, au travail qui m'a parlé de, euh, des Summer University. Les gens, tous les gens viennent, c'est vraiment quelque chose qui est fantastique, c'est que tous les gens viennent faire une Summer University avec un esprit ouvert, vraiment un esprit super ouvert. Ils veulent rencontrer une nouvelle des personnes qui sont dans les mêmes, euh, mêmes états d'esprit qu'eux, qui veulent faire des rencontres, qui veulent de, de la découverte. Ça, ça se voit par exemple durant l'Europa le, Night. Euh, c'est une nuit dans laquelle chaque personne doit venir avec un petit peu de une, une création de, de, son, de son pays. Euh, donc notamment c'est la nourriture. C'est l'occasion de, de tester vraiment de la nourriture de plein de pays différents, vraiment des choses auxquelles on n'aurait pas pensé, vraiment quelque chose de très très typique. Euh, aussi beaucoup d'alcool, hein. ça c'est quelque chose qu'il faut dire aux aux années aux russes, aux biélorusses, aux polonais, aux tchèques, c'est la peine qu'ils viennent tous avec une bouteille de vodka hein, différente. 
juste après la Senior City, je suis reparti en sur partie, cette fois-ci pour 8 mois, donc comme je l'ai dit, en, en Amérique du Sud. Et là, je viens juste de rentrer, j'ai quelques, choses, quelques petites choses à faire à droite à gauche, et après, je, je repars de nouveau. Hein. C'est peu cher au niveau du voyage, donc que ce soit l'Amérique du Sud ou l'Asie du Sud-Est. Et finalement, ça a été l'Amérique du Sud. Pourquoi pour, euh, Surtout pour la langue. C'est ça qu'il y a des choses qui m'intéressaient dans, euh, dans les deux régions. Mais je voulais partir seul et je voulais pouvoir communiquer avec les gens. C'était vraiment un voyage pour rencontrer des gens, découvrir des, des, des nouveaux lieux, mais aussi des, des nouvelles cultures, des nouvelles manières de penser, des, des, de nouvelles personnes. Et tout mon voyage a duré, a duré 7 mois. Donc j'ai commencé par euh, un mois en Bolivie. Ensuite, je suis resté un mois et demi au Pérou. Euh, ensuite très vite en, en Équateur, je suis juste resté voilà, 15 jours en Équateur, j'ai fait le choix de ne pas visiter la côte, euh, la côte équatorienne parce que je pensais voir par la suite euh, la côte notamment en Colombie et euh, au Costa Rica. Ensuite Colombie, je suis resté à nouveau un mois, un mois et demi, un mois et demi en Colombie. Puis Costa Rica où mes, mes parents m'ont rejoint euh, trois semaines. Donc, je suis à nouveau rentré et revenu en Colombie, pays qui m'a beaucoup plu pour euh, plusieurs raisons avant de finalement finir par le Mexique, le Mexique où je suis resté ouais, trois, trois semaines au Mexique, puis le retour, à, le retour en France euh, sous la pluie, euh, très, très très triste. Hein. Au début, je pensais, je pensais juste partir euh, quatre mois, quelque chose comme ça, repartir après la, la Colombie. Finalement, je me suis rendu compte que j'avais assez d'argent, parce qu'il y a vraiment moyen de voyager avec peu d'argent dans, dans tous ces pays-là, en prenant des, des moyens de transport locaux, en dormant dans, en dortoir. En, en mangeant de, de, dans un restaurant euh, avec les locaux, donc ça on peut économiser l'argent sur ça, et du coup euh, je faisais rester un petit peu plus jusqu'au jusqu Mexique. Hein. Donc au final je suis resté en tout euh, 7 mois dans Mexique, en Amérique latine. Mon avion partait de, euh, de Barcelone le, le 15 septembre, hein, 15 septembre 2015, pour arriver à, à Santa Cruz en Bolivie, et après c'était ouais, l'aventure. Après j'étais vraiment ouais, tout seul. Putain, c'est fantastique. Pas trop. Voilà, c'est très sympa. Eh, lac Titicaca. C'est le plus haut lac navigable au monde. Soit des, soit des locaux qu'on rencontre. Ça qui est vraiment fantastique, c'est qu'on n'est jamais seul. Je ne dirais pas que j'ai changé, je dirais plutôt que j'ai évolué. C'est-à-dire que c'est dans, dans le sens où je suis toujours la même personne, mais il y a vraiment des, des choses qui, qui, sont, qui sont un petit peu différentes dans ma, dans ma manière d'être, ma manière de penser. Euh, maintenant, je peux vraiment ouais, supporter plus, plus de choses, plus de, euh, des, des petits problèmes de, de tous les jours qu'on peut, qu peut avoir en Europe. Je me suis rendu compte que c'était vraiment rien par rapport à ce qu'affrontaient certaines personnes. Ce qu'on peut penser, nous, de certaines cultures, peut être totalement faux. Moi, l'expérience d'expatriation que, que je vais vivre, c'est un petit peu de deux choses, un petit peu d'assimilation et un petit peu aussi de, de choses nouvelles. C'est-à-dire que je vais devoir m'adapter à la culture locale, euh, apprendre encore plus, même lire en espagnol pour vraiment voilà, parler la langue, essayer de, de m'intégrer avec les, avec les Colombiens. Mais c'est aussi apporter un petit peu des, des choses personnelles, hein, de, de, manière, de manière de faire, ma manière d'être, en faisant des efforts pour m'intégrer pour en Colombie. Et ça, ils adorent vraiment, dans tous les pays d'Amérique du Sud, ils adorent vraiment qu'on fasse l'effort d'apprendre leur langue, ils sont tellement vus de, de touristes anglais, australiens, américains, qui, qui sont tellement habitués à ce que le monde entier parle, parle anglais. Et je me suis rendu compte qu'il y a des choses qu'on 
dont on a besoin tous les jours, dont on se sert dans, dans, la, dans la vie courante, qu'on n'apprend pas forcément à, à l'université, dans les, dans, les, dans les écoles en général. Et ce sont des choses qu'on peut apprendre en voyage ou, ou par exemple avec la semaine université, avec, avec AEG. AEG m'a beaucoup aidé sur un petit peu une sorte de répétition, un test avant, avant ce voyage, notamment sur le, le fait de, voy de voyager seul, d'être de, avec des gens inconnus, des, vraiment avec des, des inconnus qu'on rencontre et euh, avec qui on doit apprendre à partager, mais aussi à travailler, à, faire des, à mettre en place des, des, des projets ensemble. Donc c'est vraiment une super expérience pour euh, sans rentrer de, de nouvelles personnes d'autres d'autres pays. Là, je suis entré depuis euh, un mois en France, je vais encore rester euh, deux mois de plus. Puis mon objectif, c'est de repartir en, en Colombie, euh, mais plus longtemps. J'ai envie vraiment de vivre une expérience d'expatriation, pas seulement de, de voyage. Et donc, je vais repartir pour, avec un visa, le visa permis vacances travail, qui me permet de repartir en, en Colombie euh, jusqu'à un an maximum, pour pouvoir voyager et travailler dans le pays. Peut-être travailler dans le tourisme, comme professeur de français, euh, par exemple, ouvrir une, pour pas ouvrir une pâtisserie, ceux qui sont très mauvais en, en gâteau, les, les Colombiens. Et tu comptes faire des gâteaux Alors, euh, Pourquoi pas <rire> Pourquoi pas non, Je ne sais pas encore, c'est vraiment très très fou. Euh, à côté de ça, je vais aussi voyager un petit peu en Europe, puisque ma, ma copine colombienne me rejoint quelques semaines cet été. Donc, euh, on va se retrouver un petit peu en, en France, puis quelques semaines en, en Italie, pour visiter. Euh, avant de repartir ensemble en Colombie, je ne sais pas encore. Je pars entre, euh, entre un mois et un an, voire plus, sans vraiment, projet de, sans vraiment un projet de finir. Insomma, insomma, l'avete fatto quindi? È vero, quindi. È vero? Questo viaggio alla conoscenza di queste persone, di queste storie che voi già conoscevate, però no, non avete mai approfondito in qualche maniera. No, esatto. Via in qualche maniera. Sì, cioè, mi, mi, mi ha colpito molto perché si vedeva, si sentiva quanto mm. erano emozionate, quanto erano fiere di, di quello che avevano. Eh, ottenuto ehm, quello davvero ti, cioè, ti, mo ti motiva ti... Certo. alla fine tu vedi persone che hanno fatto davvero cioè, si sono sforzate a fare tanto tante cose in sostanza e, e tu le guardi e pensi cazzo ma cioè, è, è volontariato cioè, alla fine non hai preso neanche un euro in tutto questo a me sembra solo un'associazione cioè, molto bella però quella parte soprattutto del volontariato era una cosa che all'inizio non la vedi da fuori. Devi davvero entrare e vedere quanto tempo ci vuole, quanto tempo, quanti soldi anche. Quanto sforzo soprattutto e quanto impegno. Devi lasciarti davvero aprire la mente e di sicuro queste persone che noi abbiamo trovato sono, sono state, diciamo che... Grado. Io vedendo queste storie mi chiedo qual è secondo voi il filo comune che le lega tutte, no? conclusione di questo viaggio, alla fine di un viaggio si tirano sempre le somme, qualche mese fa vi ho detto si parte, e adesso che sei tornati? Sicuramente il fatto che cose che sembravano davvero lontane, quindi non per forza soltanto a livello geografico ma anche proprio a livello culturale, e in realtà non lo sono così tanto, 
Eh, Hai tutti gli stereotipi che, che riguardano una certa cultura e, e poi invece ti ritrovi davanti a una persona come te e una persona come te. Quindi quello che ho portato indietro è saper sicuramente analizzare in modo diverso le persone. Questo viaggio è stato in, cioè in un certo senso cioè una, un'esperienza condensata di, uh, di quello che potrebbe uh, offrirmi uh, ai geo. In una manciata di giorni alla fine, per quanto sia stato lungo, in una manciata di giorni abbiamo visto delle esperienze, abbiamo ascoltato storie di esperienze che sono durate anni in realtà. Eh, raccontate un attimo un aneddoto di, questi, di questo mese e mezzo. I mezzi a Kiev. Assolutamente. Kiev è stato divertente, ha una particolarità nel trasporto. Tut- tutto il russo. Tutta... No, non, t- non tanto per la lingua, ma perché tu entri lì praticamente, cioè ci sono dei eh, autobus, piccoli autobus. Diciamo dei van. E dentro sembra che tu sia nella, una sorta di salotto della della casa di tua nonna perché ci sono le tende i tappeti cioè, i tappeti <ride> però vedi queste cose culturalmente inaspettate eh, che ti aprono la testa no ti sì, aprono la mente, non è. in realtà è un mondo completamente diverso e è qua dietro casa in realtà mm. ormai perché quanto ci messo tre ore per arrivare tre un costo contenuto ed è qua dietro sì, però beh, vediamo anche il finale come, come lo chiudete come lo chiudete <ride> Non chiudiamo? chiudiamo. Punti di domanda. Un viaggio non si chiude mai. Un viaggio non si chiude mai. Infatti, questa è un po' metaforica. Oh, 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 oh. Eh, dai, 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 Cry it anymore oh.